Welcome back to online classes. Dear students, today I am going to discuss with Indian Penal Code under section 506. 506. Okay. 506 explain about punishment for criminal intimidation. Okay. And also explain that whoever commits the offense of criminal intimidation shall be punished with imprisonment of either description for a term which may extend it to two years or with the fine or with both and if the threat be to cause death or grievous hurt or to cause the destruction of any property by fire or to cause an offense punishable with death or imprisonment for life or with the imprisonment for a term which may extend it to seven years or to impute unchastity to a woman shall be punished with imprisonment of either description for a term which may extend it to seven years or with the fine or with both okay so now let's see as per the section where a person entered the victim's house during midnight armed with a knife and threatened with death anyone who came between himself and the victim the offense under the section was held to have been made out the threat must be real in the sense that the acute the accused means what he says and the victim of the threat should feel threatened actually where the accused made his outburst on a public servant when he was on the way to attend his office saying that he was going to kill going to kill him it was held that it was sufficient to hold that the act will fall under section 506 of IPC and also mirrors what is that mirrors here in order to attract the ingredients of section 506 of IPC the intention of the accused must be to cause alarm to the victim mere expression of words without any intention to cause alarm would not suffice to constitute an offense under section 506 of ipc it must be shown that the person charged actually threatened another with injury to his person reputation or property or to the person or reputation of anyone in whom that person is interested with the intention to cause alarm in the present case even if the allegations in the complaint are read as whole and are accepted in their entirety of the true the ingredients of section 5 or 6 of IPC are not attracted in so far as the petitioner herein are concerned except the alleged that the petitioner had supported his son in his refusal to take the complaint along with him there is no specific allegation that the petitioners had threatened to comply with injury to her person. Reputation or property or to the reputation of anyone in whom the complaint in whom the complainant is interested with the intention to cause her alarm. Here the complaint in so far as the petitioners are alleged to have committed an offence under section 506 of IPC is quashed. In Amulya Kumar versus <coughs> Nabagamma Becharu, a leading case, the court was held that the intention of the accused must be to cause alarm to the victim and whether he is alarmed or not is of no consequence. However, mere expression of any words without any intention to cause alarm would not be sufficient to bring in the application of section 506 of IPC okay what is the notification number part 1 non cognizable here yeah, since the part 1 of section 506 is not cognizable the permission of the magistrate would be required to try applicants under said section in the instant case it is admitted position that no such permission has been obtained by the prosecution from the magistrate some other proceedings 
are also quashed. Okay. Some notification to make the offense cognizable. Okay. Notifications to make the offense cognizable. In government of uh, Goa issued a notification declaring offense punishable under section 506 of the penal code committed with, within the state of Goa as cognizable and non-bailable. Okay. The law made by the parliament could have been amended only by an appropriate legislation by the state government and no provision of the said code would have been amended only by issuing a notification. There is no power vesting in the state government to amend the first schedule to the criminal procedure code 2 of 1974 by issuing a notification. In any event, the admitted position is that notification dated 29 April and April 11th May of 2014 has not been published in the official gazette and therefore the said notification cannot be a notification contemplated by subsection 1 of 10 of the said act of 1932. Therefore the clear legal position which emerges is that the offence punishable under section 506 of IPC when committed within the state of Goa is a non cognizable offences. Okay. Now it's clear this notification to make an offence cognizable. Okay. Okay students. I am going to discuss with another section, section 5 or 6. What is that? Explain, section 5 or 6 of IPC explain that criminal intimidation by an annoyance communication. You know very well annoyance communication. Okay. That means whoever commits the offense of criminal intimidation by an annoyance communication or having taken precaution to conceal the name or abode of the persons from whom the threat comes shall be punished with imprisonment of either description for a term which may extend it to two years in addition to the punishment provided for the offence by the lost proceeding sections. Okay. That means the con for a conviction under the section it must be shown that the accused committed criminal intimidation by an annoyance communication. A person who extorts money by sending anonymous letters as it from God conveying th threats of divine punishment if a specified sum of money be not paid to a certain person identifiable by the description given in the letters cannot be convicted under the section as it does not lie in the, this power either to inflict the threatened punishment or cause it to be inflicted okay and next section 508 of IPC. What is that? This act explain act caused by inducing person to believe that he will be rendered an object of divine displacement displeasure. Divine displeasure. So as per the section explained about whoever voluntarily causes or attempts to cause any person to do anything which that person is not legally bound to do or to omit to do anything which he is legally entitled to do by inducing or attempting to induce that person to believe that he or any person in whom he is interested will be rendered by some act of the offender and object of divine displeasure if he does not do the thing which it is the object of the offender to cause him to do or if he does the thing which it is object of the offender to cause him to vomit shall be punished with imprisonment of either description for a term which may extend it to one year or with the fine or with both. I will give you illustration as per the section of uh, 508 of I IPC. Here A is a person, Z is a person. Okay. So A sits Dharna at is that door is that doors with the intention of causing it to be believed that by so sitting he renders Z and objects of divine displeasure now A has committed the offense defined in this section okay what is the section 508 of IPC 
and second illustration a is a person a threatens z that unless z performs a certain act a will kill one of a's own children okay under such circumstances that the killing would be believed to render z an object of divine displeasure now a has committed the offense defined in this section that means 508 of ipc okay student what is the dharna what what is the meaning of dharna this section is intended to prevent such practices dharna under <coughs> drug also <coughs> here dharna means a sitting at the door of a house or tend to compel payment of a debt due by debtor or of arrears owing by a public officer or prince okay the person so sitting observes all strict fast fasting and as long as he, he so sits the person from who he demands payment is obliged to fast also and abstain from his usual occupations and amusements as if the shooter were to perish the consequence of the sin would fall upon him it was the first made a punishable offense by bengal regulation 7 of 1820 okay what is the divine displeasure what is that meaning a person who is excommunicated does not become an object of divine displeasure by the act of priest who pronounces this sentence the accused wrote to the widow of a person whose work he had done to pay the balance of the money due to him otherwise it would be recovered from her husband in the next world it was held that a mere threat that if a debt was not paid then by operation of divine lost displeasure would fall upon the debtor was not sufficient to bring the case within the meaning of this section because the section contemplated that the person intended to harm would be made the object of divine displeasure by some of the offender okay student now is clear okay i'm closing the session okay read with properly watch regularly in our online classes those who are not subscribed in this in this youtube subscribe immediately the subscription also very free only okay because i am updating daily online classes then it is useful to in your profession or in your legal studies okay okay students thank you all bye all the best